Hey everyone, Dimitri here, and I've got one of my biggest homeowning challenges so far. Now, our house is pretty old. Uh, it was built in 1935, and it has steam heating. You know, those old cast iron radiators. And ever since we moved in, the steam heat has been having all kinds of issues here and there. Some of the radiators would heat up really slowly, much slower than others. Some others would make really loud clanging noises, and more worryingly, the pipes themselves would make these really bad hammering sounds towards the end of the heating cycle. So I did a lot of research on this, and I think I've got it figured out. And if I'm right, the solution won't cost very much, and it should solve all these issues at once. But first, let's go over how steam heating works, specifically two-pipe steam heating, which is what this is. In the basement, we have the boiler, which boils water and creates steam. The steam rises through these main pipes, which go out to the rest of the house and up to the radiators. And at each radiator, the steam comes in through here. Here's a valve you can turn on or off if you want to shut off this radiator. And when the steam comes into the radiator, it condenses back into water because the radiator is cool and the steam is hot. So then the condensate falls down and flows through here and goes back through these return pipes all the way back to the boiler. Now here's where the problems can arise. What about when the radiator becomes completely hot? So inside the radiator, the steam no longer condenses back into water. Well, the steam would start going into the return lines. And that's a very bad thing, and I'll come back to why that's bad. But to prevent steam from getting into the return pipes, we have these devices at the end of each radiator. This is a steam trap. It literally traps the steam at one end and only allows condensate to pass through. Here's how it works. This thing is just a hollow container, and inside of it is one of these. This is called a cage unit, and the cage unit is mounted on top of the pipe at this gasket. Inside that enclosure, the cage unit is just surrounded by air, and when condensate flows through it, it can pass right through this hole. But when steam comes in here and makes contact with it, this bellows expands and pushes this ball into the hole, which closes it off and doesn't let the steam pass through. So the problem is that these cage units have a pretty limited lifespan. They're generally only good for seven, maybe 10 years at the most because this bellows is actually kind of delicate and after a while, it just stops working. And it can fail in one of two ways. It can fail in the closed position, which means it'll plug up the radiator and make it not warm up at all, or warm up very, very slowly. Or it can fail in the open position, which means it'll let everything through, including steam. So what's so bad about steam getting into the return pipes? Well, let's think about it. Here's my return line going back to the boiler, and here's the return from one radiator upstairs, and there's another one, and the flow is going this way. Suppose this radiator has a failed steam trap, so we're getting steam coming in at this point here. But over here, the radiator is still warming up, so it's sending condensate into the return line. The condensate flows down here and comes up against the steam that's here. And what happens then? You guessed it, hammering and banging. Anyway, I took apart a couple of our steam traps, and sure enough, they are completely dead. It looks like they haven't been replaced probably since this whole system was installed many decades ago. These things are pretty easy to disassemble. You unscrew this cap and pull out the old cage unit. Uh, a couple of our radiators are this kind of recessed form factor, where the steam trap is annoyingly hidden underneath it. So for these ones, I did have to remove the whole steam trap assembly, but this is still not so bad. This is a compression fitting over here, easy to remove, and then the steam trap unscrews from the pipe. So all of the steam traps will need to be replaced. Now, fortunately, I was able to find a supplier on eBay that sold me a bunch of these cage units for just over $10 a piece which is a good deal for some fresh cage units. And I say fresh instead of new, because these are definitely not new. This is new old stock, but um, these look like they're in good shape and we can test one out by putting it in some steam and watching these bellows expand. You see that? It works. So to replace each one, I'll unscrew the cap, remove the old cage unit. Let's clean out any old gunk that's in there and also clean the underside of the cap and drop in the new cage unit. Make sure it's seated properly in there. 
And before I screw the cap back on, I'm going to put a little anti-seize compound so that it'll be easier to unscrew the next time these need to be serviced. Let's tighten that up a bit. Doesn't need to be too tight, just to keep the steam in there. And 12 more to go. All right, I am done, and I've already turned the heat back on, and the difference is night and day. There's no more noise coming from any of the radiators, and most importantly, no more hammering in the pipes. This is awesome. So the total cost of this project is around $160 and about an afternoon's worth of time, but the difference is incredible. So the lesson for today is, if you have a two-pipe steam heating system in your house, make sure to replace those steam traps on a regular basis. All right, everybody, see you next time, and stay warm.